I am Iron Man. I held the false notion that I could operate on two tracks and run them both at the same time and neither would suffer. Thank you. We need a walkway to get to court. Watch out, there's a ditch, there's a, there's a grass thing back Excuse me, here. can we get to court? We have pretty much exhausted, I think, the rehabilitative measures that we can make here. I believe you can do pretty much anything you want to do. Uh, but it isn't going to be my decision. Let alone, I'm not on either track. I'm just a kid who had a predisposition to self-destruction. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Iron Man. Hey, what's up? <laughs> this video is brought to you by The Published Press. On a serious note there, you know, oh. you know the last couple of years have been, you know, interesting time mm, for you. Very interesting. In the early 2000s, Robert Downey Jr. was not the man you know today. You're one of these guys I hear these sort of urban legends about. How are people, when they meet you these days, do you find that people are not quite sure how to approach you? And I heard that, like, when you do movies, you essentially almost have to work for free because the insurance bond is so high. In fact, he was so unreliable, he couldn't find work. So if you want to work with me, handle the insurance first. And I think they're just a little worried that I might, you know, put a shiv in them or something. It's kind of like, they take a bunch of the dough up front. He just took 40 cents on the dollar. And then when I finish the movie and I haven't, you know, snorted half of Bolivia or ruined them. Or and then gave it back to me when I didn't, you know, ruin his movie. They go, oh, well, thank you. It's not that we don't trust you. Here's your money back. Kind of like that. But this is all because Robert had grown a reputation <laughs> of being a little thank you, Robert. wild. And what's next? I'm trying to stay in the moment. That's my biggest problem right now. Uh, I don't know. Probably dinner after this and the party. I'm trying to live in the moment. And doing a damn good job of it. I've read that some of the actors in the film were concerned that you were playing the part too realistically. I think Julian's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, there was some concern because we'd like, you know, finish doing the party club scene. He disappears, nobody knows where, and then he comes back like nothing ever happened. And, and he's wasted all the time. And they'd be like, all right, that's a wrap. Time to go home. And I'd be like, no, now it's time to like do the party scene for real. Even by Hollywood standards, your rise to stardom has been pretty quick. You were in the SNL cast, and you were 20 years old when you started on the show. They know why whales beach themselves. And did you enjoy that experience up there? Spider-Man told me! Whoa! God, it's a video camera. How'd you guys know? Well, it's like, I think doing live television is probably the, is probably the most nerve-wracking thing you can do. You'll go, oh, oh. Well, that was 1985, and I have no recollection of that year. I'm oh. not lying. I pump gas. I have a job. <laughs> How did you get the job, get the part, try out? What did you do? It was slight nepotism. He's like, well, get Downey in here. Your dad has a reputation for being... You know, a very eclectic artist, a very, you know, odd director. How dare you say that a man could marry his mother and sleep with her? My dad's a real film aficionado and a, a great pioneer in his own right. I said, go see the movie. I mean, you can't take this seriously. No, shit. If you do, you're a nitwit. You were in the arts every day, kind of. What was the uh, the first film you were in? Was this one of your dad's projects? Oh, I, yeah, the first film I was in, my father got a grant to do this movie called Pound, which is about dogs in a pound. Any hair on your ball? Robert's introduction to performing was thanks to his father. But this was not the only new and exciting thing his dad showed him. But I think everyone's dad, they're this kind of like stoic mountain that we can't climb. I grew up in a family who was doing drugs and trying to be creative. Does that describe your family life? In a nutshell, for sure. Didn't your father introduce you to drugs? Yeah, I was probably eight, nine, ten. As I recall, I was like swinging in a hammock in East Haddon, Connecticut, and one of dad was lecturing at Colgate University, and there was some guy in the room, and he had a joint, and I just like put my hand out, and he came over and put it in my hand, and it was on. <laughs> it was the missing ingredient for a while. 2003, emerging from the darkest period in his life, Robert had to find his feet again. So what is, what is your life like right now? Pardon? Is it, a, I mean, for you, 
dealing with all that? Is it a struggle day to day for you? I mean, the sobriety like thing, is it hard? Is it easy? I mean, you're getting into it, it's a day by it's, day. Uh, you know what it is? It's, it's mandatory. I can't change it, it's in the past, and I just focus on doing what I'm doing now, you know, and what I love to do, which is making movies. He was keen to get back in society's good books. That wouldn't be so easy. You know, I'm a, a, a little more difficult than some other actors. No movie studio would hire the talented but tortured actor. The truth is, yeah. y'all know my path. To the studios, Downey's late 90s antics meant he was a risk not worth taking. But eager to perform, he just had to gain someone's trust. I think basically it's about having uh, support and some people who hold you accountable. Tell us about your friendship with Mel Gibson. Really are. He's a very good employee. <laughs> he makes an excellent houseboy. Let's plug this movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we have to do. Air America is the title. Gene, watch your controls. You're red yeah. And Mel Gibson is Gene in this film. What? He's my big brother. Yeah. He's a real friend. Did you guys get along all right? Yeah, he's really great. Yeah. He's really great. Having formed a tight friendship a decade prior, Mel Gibson decided to take a chance on Robert. And I couldn't get hired, so he cast me in the lead of a movie that was actually developed for him. The and he kept a roof over my head, and he kept food on the table. Robert Downey Jr.'s performance is remarkable. The singing detective was the first step Downey needed, and it led to Gothica, which is when everything started changing. You've had good things come out of projects before. You got something, I would say, even better at this particular project. You met a woman that you're now engaged to. His fiance is film producer Susan Levine, who stole his heart during the filming of Gothica. So you look happy? You got a new girlfriend? You've got a fiance. I got a fiance. Yeah. Susan Levine, soon to be Downey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How's that going? It's great. We have a picture of you and, and your girlfriend, Susan. Hi, honey. There you go. That's Susan. And you, oh, you've gone all kind of. Gooey. We were just screwing two hours ago. <laughs> were you leery, though, of his, of, his, of his past when you first started dating? I mean, really? Well, you have given your wife, Susan, credit for making you the man that you are today. He's lived a lot of life, but the amazing thing to me is that he's actually incredibly grounded, incredibly normal. What is it about her that has made you who you are? Falling in love helps. A lot. There's something to live for. Yeah. And such a nice guy. He makes me laugh like no one, no one can. When Susan came into Robert's life, he now had something he really couldn't lose. He really credits her for his sobriety. I think eventually you, you, you fall into somebody who's kind of like, well, I see that you are a tall order and uh, let's make it work. She sort of gave him this ultimatum that if he didn't shape up, She'd be out of there. Uh, Susan said, uh, yeah, d don't do it anymore or, or I'm, I'm splitting. Otherwise, sayonara. It was this fear of disappointing that sharpened Robert's focus. But it was this same feeling that pushed him to the brink a decade earlier. Hi, I'm Robert Downey Jr. And I have a pretty good idea of who Charlie Chaplin was. Well, I'd better, since I had the amazing good fortune and petrifying responsibility of portraying him in Chaplin, the first film ever made about his life. You have been quoted as saying that Chaplin changed your life. I would say that this, that this film, how could this film not change your life? The casting of Chaplin is very difficult because, firstly, you have to have somebody who can go from the age of 17 right through up to the age of 83. You had to have an absolute matinee idol. There's a lot of fences to jump. There's an even higher fence. That, of course, is Chaplin's genius. You had to have somebody who, the moment they came on the screen, absolutely bewitched you. You had to believe that women fell over for him like nine pins. You had to believe that this man was a genius. There was just no question whatsoever that the, that the actor who combined all those elements was Robert. As you've already said, Mr. Hoover, motion pictures are for the people. He's worked so hard and he's done it. He's achieved it. He has the essence of Chaplin. Most of the people work for a living and they don't make much money doing it. But he actually became Chaplin. It gives them pleasure to see officialdom and the upper classes giving me a kick up the backside. 
It's not that he looks like him, he has, but he's, he moves like him, he has the grace, he has the romance. And if that can change things, so much the better. Everything that he does, even if he improvised, his improvisation didn't go back to Robert Downey Jr., it was Chaplin. Mr. Chaplin. I can't believe it's you. I get it. You pioneered generations of creators, and this is how to keep up. All learning is valuable. Pass it on. To access the script and research document for this video, subscribe to The Publish Press, a three times a week newsletter about the business of creators. Link is in the description. Felt like, um like my life all of a sudden had this new purpose. Just being able to play him is the closest I've ever felt to being like somebody with a capital S, you know? No, it was just the ultimate, ultimate education. After that picture, there was a tremendous buzz about you in the community and about what pictures you were gonna do next. What really sucks is when you live the lesson. Yeah. Did, did that picture overwhelm you so that all of a sudden it drove you into something else? And then you blindly go and disregard all that data. Downey's Oscar-nominated performance as Charlie Chaplin should have put him on the right track. A smooth road ahead. Well, if I was the, the head of a studio, I wouldn't necessarily have thought that I should have been the, the person to, to put the responsibility of this film on. But Downey had his eyes on a pleasure a little more immediate. With Chaplin, Robert Downey Jr. proved he had the confidence, drive, and talent to conquer Hollywood. He just didn't have the self-discipline. Felt like somehow that addiction that Chaplin had was tapped into something inside you. Just so I know personally, in Chaplin, were you generally like together during Chaplin? Yeah, and there's nothing better than shooting scenes in Veve, Switzerland, in old age prosthesis, while you are booming on mushrooms still from the night before. <laughs> It is a scar. You've said Home for the Holidays is for me one of the most relaxed performances yeah. in the history of cinema. Rooting around up inside oh. of schnoz, and obviously this guy's not a big oh wiper, he God. smells light. Yep, what was relaxing you? Black tar heroin. A little, little ladder, get a little fulcrum on that, to come flying out of there, and the pus and the blood and the poop. What? Flying out of his nose. I mean, it's, it's Amityville. And you were high on the set. That was, yeah, that was the first time. I'm not trying to undermine what is essentially, I guess, an illness, but it kind of sounds like fun in some aspect. Oh, right up until the cops showed up, it was a blast. By the mid-90s, Downey was on a downward spiral. Two words. Huh. Convicted felon. 1996, the actor violated his probation when he fled from a detox center. His rehab is stemming from several drug and weapons arrests, but a judge sent him back. A year later, he skipped a court-ordered drug test and spent the next four months in the L.A. County Jail. Well, Robert's been in a residential program um, for the last 120 days. For past several years, he's just going through the revolving door of rehab program and being arrested. The so judge sounded very, very wary of that as his future. Which is too sad, such a bright person and he's not a criminal. They rather candidly said you didn't know whether or not you'd be able to maintain sobriety in that business. That's a call you have to make. He's a victim of the drugs. 
1999, Downey skipped another drug test. A judge gave Downey hard time, state prison for nearly one year. He literally threw the book at me and went for the maximum sentencing allowed, which was a three-year sentence. What is it like to be in prison? The first day, I was, I was kind of scared, yeah. It's an unimaginably awful situation. And so by the time you're in prison, that's not rock bottom for you? Nope. I just happened to be in a situation the very last time, and I said, you know what, I don't think I can continue doing this. Jonas Stark makes you feel he's a cool exec with a heart of steel. And Iron Man... 2006. Marvel announced the production of the first ever live-action Iron Man movie. The only question was... Who do they cast? I remember sitting down with the guy. I had just been hired to cast in the first Iron Man. Tell me all the qualities that you think are most important. And I was like, geez, he just got it in it. He's got that spark in him. Fast, quick-witted, and funny, and dynamic, and a bit troubled, and confident, and brilliant. And we really kept coming back to Downey. He's ready. Everybody thinks you're brilliantly talented and you've had a lot of support. I said to, to John Favreau, I said, I think I'm the guy for the job. And he goes, you know, I do and they don't. And that's when we were in your office and, and we were pointing to his headshot and saying, we got to try to figure this out. At some point, that can run out. You have a fear that that goodwill has a bottom. Robert Downey Jr. at that point in his career wasn't necessarily a family-friendly name. But at the time, it was, whoa, risky casting Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, of course it runs out. It's like anything, you know, because you're, you're acting like a child, and sooner or later you're going to get grounded. Casting Downey as Tony Stark seemed like a no-brainer. But let's rewind the clock once more. <laughs> I was a therapist? Uh-huh. It says a, a attorney at law right on the door. In 2001, Robert won the Golden Globe and Screen Actors Guild Awards for his portrayal of Larry Paul in Ally McBeal. Robert Downey Jr., Ally McBeal. Most Monday evenings on Fox have shown him to be the most gifted actor of his generation. As lawyers, we tend to embrace settlements as a good thing. We settle, we celebrate. Mr. Downey's astonishing work on Ally McBeal may be as good as anything anyone has done on a television series. We know what we sacrifice in order to give ourselves to this art form. He said when he was writing it, that it was like having a new toy to write for me and I will do my best to not get sent back to the factory. Well, maybe we'll uh, meet in court one day. How did your Ally McBeal career end? Poorly, if I remember correctly. Robert had to tell himself this time would be different. The journey of the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe started with the journey of Tony Stark. They made you really go through the hoops for this. How many times did you audition? If I'm not on my side for this going my way, why should anybody else be? I said to, to John Favreau, I said, I think I'm the guy for the job. And he goes, I don't think it's going to happen. And I said, well, I'm going to believe it will. Because he wasn't instantly a slam dunk approval, I suggested we have screen tests. And then it came down to the screen test, and I went in, and I'm really good at screen testing. <coughs> Maybe next time you scramble F-22s against me, I just might not play defense. I just went completely bats on it. I don't want to call it an out-of-body experience, but it was one of those rushes. Weapons that I built are being used to kill innocent people can't let that happen. That I'm sure like somebody would feel if they're about to play a big sporting arena. I'm gonna get back to work, see yourself out. You remember the door, right? I was just thinking, this is me, and I am in this situation. Like I just studied the text and thought of everything I could do better than anyone else. For that one instant, I had to psych myself into that nobody else on earth had a chance. It's ghastly, the conditions. There's not a woman in sight. I'm a woman. Yes. Clearly. It's that thing when you when you only have to focus on one thing yeah. for yeah. three weeks. Wow, you really have all of this down. You ever lose an hour of sleep your whole life? I was too prepared. I was too confident. You're never going to get me in the sack with that attitude. Crudite? 
<laughs> the truth was, we got to a point that we realized if we didn't cast him, that would have been the biggest risk. The rest is history. I am Iron Man. Robert Downey Jr. It wasn't really until we cast Robert that I fully understood what the take was. I think that's probably one of the greatest decisions in the history of, of Hollywood. When Iron Man first lifted off in 2008, it made a whopping 585 million worldwide. He's in the number one movie in America right now. A uh, slight correction, it's not the number one movie in America, it's the number one movie worldwide. That success launched Robert Downey Jr. into the rarefied air of Hollywood A-listers. But in a career often overshadowed by his troubled personal life, how has Downey defied impossible odds to stage the biggest comeback in Hollywood history? You can draw all the parallels you want, and you can call it destiny. I'm just not the, the hero type. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Inventor. With this uh, laundry list of character defects, all the mistakes I made, largely public. East Coaster, a dad of some renown. Thank you. What's your food weakness? Cheeseburgers. I want an American cheeseburger. Maybe you were born to be Iron Man. I think that actors do the films they're meant to do. Loosely prearranged destiny. Mm. And what's incredible is how far afield you can go from it and still find your way back. If it's all for nothing, then it's a, it's a tragedy. We have pretty much exhausted, I think, the rehabilitative measures that we can make here. Dig myself an early grave in this. I better calm the hell down. Because it's too easy to jump on that wagon of it's a disease and my brain's been hijacked. It's not that difficult to overcome these seemingly ghastly uh, problems. Past a certain point. You have to stand up inside yourself and, and change. I believe you can do pretty much anything you want to do. But it isn't going to be my decision. Just you are saying that it's not that difficult? No. What's hard is to decide.